story around the be your own best friend. I think that's Ooh. very rare. I think that at least in uh, you know my kind of concentric circle of friends, I think that particularly if people are driven, and I think even though you may not have a five or 10 year or 20 year plan, I mean, I think most people would consider you very successful at what you do. A lot of that drive seems to translate to people being very dissatisfied with themselves or hypercritical of themselves, or at least they seem to correlate. So, I mean, what advice would you give somebody who's maybe prone to self-flagellating? Would you have any advice to them if they're just they, they're not yet at a place where they maybe they maybe they don't even particularly like themselves right but they use work as a way to occupy their minds so that they're distracted from that i think in terms of the self-flagellation i see it and i i don't mean this to add to pile on someone who is constantly putting themselves down in their head or out loud but it is not modesty it is self-obsession unless those thoughts turn into change that make you into the person you would be very happy to be then it's very masturbatory it's you're not seeing there's no room to observe and watch and be delighted and amused by others it's it's just all self yeah and listen i have friends that are comics that cannot be alone they are out until four in the morning and only go home when it's they can drop to sleep mm -hmm. and it worries me, some of my friends. Why do you think they do that? Because being alone is terrifying for them. Being still, being alone, being alone with their thoughts is terrifying. And listen, I admit to you, I, I love being alone, but alone with my thoughts is a whole other thing. I mean, I, I am often, but I still constantly entertain myself with television and radio and radio. <laughs> I just think when you accept yourself the way you accept any schmuck on the street, you just have a lot more room for other stuff. You know, I, I had a therapist who said, look in the mirror less. And I found it to be incredibly profound. Yeah. Just know that any one of us looking in the mirror does not see what other people see. Not that what other people see is what's important, but we cognitively distort what we see in the mirror so much. I mean, look at the whole thing with selfies and, and I see it the same as people who heckle. And I know that sounds really weird connection, <laughs> but hecklers to me, whether they're saying something, yelling something out lovely or mean or whatever it is, it's interrupting, you know, like a show. Yeah. And the same with people who are all constantly taking selfies. I feel like the subtext is the same for both, which is I exist right mm -hmm. and you know that's ultimately what it is life is this existential crisis of like what is it to exist and it we need it to mean something yeah i i completely agree with you on the and i say this as someone who i think is, is pretty self-absorbed as evidenced by my sort of depressive episodes in in the past same, <laughs> so it, same. It, 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 no but because it, it is the the you know, sort of the me 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 i i i song right when you're either suffering from depression or anxiety you're kind of trapped in a self-referential loop right so i think yeah it's not conceited it's not you know it's awful but it's to be consumed yeah and i think that what's been hard for me is realizing that but not being able to extricate myself from that loop right so this this might be a, a good time to just ask in what ways therapy has been most helpful to you so there's good, the bad, and the ugly among therapists, right? So I'm, yes. I'm wondering how has therapy most helped you or why has it been helpful? Besides that, it's uh, another perspective on your life, you know, like, you know, yeah. and, uh, and how you see things and how you relate to people. Listen, there are plenty of terrible therapists out there, but it's always bizarre to me that people will drive 10 different cars to, see which one they like best or what you know and you know if you're lucky enough to be able to afford therapy and it's becoming at once less and less accessible and more and more accessible because there's a lot of stuff online and there's a lot of stuff i mean the best therapist i ever had 
charged a hundred dollars a session. This is recent, you know. I'm